Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today we're going to be experimenting with acrylic pouring for handmade cards. We're also going to play with different textures on layered stamps as part of the mixed media madness hop. So I hope you're ready to get messy with me today. The first thing that you're going to want to do is grab some paper towels. You're also going to want a box, just an old box that you can kind of let some of your pouring pieces dry in. And then you're going to want to cover your work surface. I grabbed some parchment paper, but anything will work as long as it'll keep the moisture from damaging the surface down below. So I taped that down. And then as far as supplies go, I grabbed some little two ounce cups. I've had these in my stash for a long time. You can see they're turning yellow. Um, I have some uh, popsicle sticks and some old paint, um, lots of acrylic paint in my stash. So I just grabbed these. If you don't have paint in your stash, they do have pouring paint. It's already mixed with the flow medium, um, but it, regular acrylic paint works just fine. Now, when I say flow medium, um, there are lots of different options. The Liquitex, there's the glazing medium, anything that'll help extend your paint or help it flow. Um, the most common for paint pouring is using the Flutterall, which is a whole big bottle for the same price of, as that Liquitex there. Um, so it, it goes a long way. Now, for traditional acrylic pouring, to get those little cell-looking um, designs, the little bubbles that kind of pop up, you'll want some silicone. And then instead of pouring on canvas, I'm going to be pouring on chipboard. So I've cut some panels down and then I'm going to prep them with gesso. Now, if you have a bunch of paint around and you don't have gesso, don't go buy it. Just use acrylic paint to base coat. Um, but gesso does have a little more tooth. Um, so that's why I'm using that. Now this is optional. These are kind of add-ins that I'm going to to add to my project here. I've got a whole set of different Pearl X mica powders. Um, they come in lots of different colors. They have pigment in them and they have mica flakes that give them a lot of shimmer and shine. Unfortunately, when you mix them with paint, they actually don't work that well. So if I were doing this over, I would skip it. Um, I also have some little glass beads here. These are called micro beads and they are the glass variety, not the plastic. I like them. Um, they're, they're fun to add some texture to mixed media projects. Now for our mixed media shells, I'm actually going to use the iCrafter layered shells stamp set. And then I'm, in addition to ink, I'm going to use some liquid applique for my stamping. And then I'm going to give them a lot of shine with some diamond glaze. So let's go ahead and get started with the first part. Uh, the first half of this video is, is going to be the, um, the pouring. And then if you just want to see the mixed media portion for the shells, go ahead and skip ahead to about 11 minutes, I think, in the video here. But uh, to, to start our panels, the first thing you're going to want to do is base coat them with the gesso. Like I said, if you don't have gesso, you can use just regular acrylic paint. But I'm going to go ahead and put it on. And notice that even though that's thick chipboard, it still curls up. That always happens when you wet one side of the paper and not the other. So to fix it, I'll just turn them over while they're still damp and paint a coat on the back side too. And that'll actually give us more tooth when we go to glue it down too. So see how it just naturally kind of flattened itself back out? You can do that with watercolor paper too. So after I let those panels dry a bit, um, they're ready for us to start pouring on. I've grabbed a couple cups that I'll flip upside down. Those can just kind of elevate one of my panels while I'm working with it. Um, and then I've got more cups here and I'm just going to pour a little bit of paint into each cup, one cup per color. And traditionally when you do acrylic pouring, you use more paint and just a little bit of the flood medium. Um, you can even go one to one. I've done that before um, and I, I, I've played around with it a lot um, and it's a lot of fun. And this time around, I wanted to try to get my colors even more translucent than normal. So I went way overboard with my flood medium here. <laughs> but in the end, it gave me a really chalky kind of finish rather than the shiny acrylic uh, paint finish that you would normally get. And I really like it. It's almost like, like the finish that you get from using distress oxides that you kind of wet down. So I like the way this turned out. So I went ahead and mixed them up and then I'm going to add a couple drops of the silicone. Now, if I had more paint, I would have gotten even more cells developing in my finished pieces, but um, 
it, it's fine. And I actually like the way they, everything worked out. And then this is a step that I said I would probably skip. I'm adding the mica powders, the, the Pearlex powders in coordinating colors to each of my paints here. And I was thinking because I had so much flood medium that you'd be able to see some of that shimmer more, but it, it really just kind of disappeared in there. So once I mix that all up, these are ready to, to start pouring with. And I grabbed my first panel and noticed that it was kind of the cup side up. They, they will, they'll be mostly flat, but there'll be a little bit of curl. And so you want that curl side up so that when you pour paints on it and it gets wet again, it'll start curling in the other way and it'll kind of self level again. So I am mixing my watercolors here. So I put a little bit of white paint in another cup and then some of the blue alternating with the white and blue, white and blue and the purple. Um, and then I'm going to grab two panels and I'm going to float a little bit of the white paint just on the top portion where I want the water to be on my backgrounds. So I was kind of thinking sand and sea. Um, so I'm using the blues and purples for the water and my golds and yellows there for the, the sand layer. And you do want a, a layer of paint for your colors to float on top of. Um, it helps just move everything around. The more paint you use, the faster everything will move around um, and the more will drip off. Um, notice that I have that second panel just on the um, desk there flat. That's to catch the drips. Um, I did that on purpose just so that I'm not kind of wasting as much because it kind of always feels like you're <laughs> Like you're wasting a lot of paint if you just let it drip onto the table and, and not reuse it. So um, I try to do two at a time. I have tried to do three at a time on another project, but that just kind of gets out of hand. So two at a time is kind of my limit. And on the second one, I will waste a little bit of paint, but I don't waste as much. So so this is the, the way that I like to do it. And this is my first time playing with the pouring on chipboard. So um, I'm, I'm kind of learning as I'm going here and it's fun. You're just gonna wanna move it around, back and forth, let gravity do its job there. And then I grab my heat gun and the heat gun is gonna help with two things. It's help, help blow the paint around a little bit more and that will also help the silicone start to kind of create those bubbles or those cells that is kind of the one of the really fun things that that you tend to see with um, acrylic pores and then so I've kind of I've got the water basically how I like it so I want to work on my sand and I know everything is going to keep moving so I, I'm not going to try to get my water exactly perfect at this point because if I did then when I add the sand all of that's going to move around and <laughs> so I'm going to kind of work on them together from this point out. So I added a little bit more white paint to the panel and then I mixed my sand colors there alternating white, yellow, white, yellow, um, and the brown just to, uh, you, you alternate with the white in between or you can substitute black if you're doing different colors. Um, but when you substitute and pour one color into the next, um, you don't, you kind of want a separator. So I'm using the white to separate one color from the next um, for both the water and the sand layers. And it, it really does help. And if you've got some spots that are just not really working the way you want them to, you can move them around with your finger, use a popsicle stick, whatever you want, and then try to just move them around some more so that you kind of hide the, um, the brush lines or the smear lines that you created. And as they dry, you can already see that this panel kind of curls up a little bit more. It, it's not that bad and in fact it kind of flattens itself out. But as it's curling up, the, that means the paint will want to fall off the edges. So you're just going to kind of get it basically how you want it and then you're going to let gravity do some more work on its own as it's drying. So you can see I just kind of played with it, played with it. I'm getting those bubbles from the silicone that are like kind of making the cells on the sides there or in the center there. And then I'm just kind of getting the edges a little more, a little more space and color and differentiating those colors a bit. When I'm 
pretty much happy with this. I'll grab my clipboard that has my craft mat on it and set that aside to dry. Now I'll pick up that second panel, the one that had the drips falling onto it, and I'm going to add a little more white paint to separate the sea from the sand colors. And then I can pour on my sand colors and move it around a little bit. And you can see this becomes a lot of fun. It's kind of addicting. And the, the paint that I've mixed up here, I used to make six panels. And when I was done, I actually had enough paint here to do at least six more. So don't be afraid to cut extra panels, more panels than you think you'll need because you, you may end up having more and just want to keep playing. Um, I kind of, when I got to six, I decided that was plenty. Um, so I went ahead and kind of moved this all around and you can see that second one I even like better than the first one <laughs> um, And that was just with the mostly with drippings So I did all six panels and then I start I let them dry and while they were drying I was working on my seashells So the seashells that I'm using these are layered stamps from iCrafter um, and basically you have a solid base that you stamp with your light color and then you will um, gradually add darker colors for the different detail stamps that that layer on top um, and in my misty I put the two solid base stamps already and I also um, put some scraps of white paper in there those are my strips that I'm using to do two things one I want to test the colors and two I want to give myself um, a scrap that I can test my different detail layers on. Before I go ahead and stamp it on my good paper, I'll stamp it and make sure everything's lined up on these test pieces. So um, I know for the, the shell on the left, I just want one color, that, that kind of beige there for my base coat um, for the first stamp. And for the stamp on the right, I wanted to kind of mix the purple and gray together. So I used my blender brush, um, my little little blender brushes. I think they're eye blender brushes from iCrafter. Super handy and they're color coordinated so you can just keep using them without having to clean them. <laughs> um, and I'm stamping, I believe that's the um, velvet and hickory smoke for the, uh, the purple and gray combination there. And after I stamp them on watercolor paper the first time, I'm going to mist the stamps with water and then I'll stamp them a second time. That kind of helps my gray and purple blend and it, it really softens the effect and it looks like watercolor. So I really like the way that looks. I'm not going to spend a lot of time fussing with it because we have several more layers that we're going to put on top of it. But I want to give a little bit of texture everywhere I can. So then I'll rotate my strips and stamp again because I want six of each shells. After I get those stamped out, I'm going to grab my second layer and notice I've got my uh, scratch paper pieces in there again. And that that's this is really why I'm stamping on the scratch paper, just so that I can test the lineup here. Uh, make sure that I get the layers on top of each other the way I want them and also to test my colors. So I do like this. I think this is seedless preserves on top of my first layer, but notice that it's a little bit too high. I kind of missed the mark there. So I'll peel it up, move it back down. I cleaned off that stamp because this time when I stamp it, I'm going to stamp it with a different color. And that way I can see if I've got it lined up and the, um, the colors are all separate. So it really does help kind of differentiate and help me see you know, what's registered and what's not. And of course I didn't like that one either. <laughs> so I'm going to pick it up and try it a third time here. And this one, third time's a charm. That one was where I liked it. So I'll clean it off again and then I'll test out the other one. And luckily for me, first time was the charm there. <laughs> so that one worked first time. You never know, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp these on my watercolor paper pieces and I'm spinning them. Um, for the second layer here, because it's kind of, uh, especially on the purple one, it's um, a lot of like large areas that's solid. So I'm stamping them twice just to get nice full coverage. 
And then I know you're probably thinking, didn't you say mixed media? Well, that's where layer three comes in. <laughs> so I've already gone ahead and lined them up and tested them in my Misty on my scratch pieces. I know that they're right. And right now we're just going to work on the purple shell. So instead of stamping with ink, I'm going to use some liquid applique. This is basically like a snow marker and I'm going to just squeeze some out onto an acrylic block. I've got a new foam pad on my little handle there and I'm going to just kind of use that to dab onto the third layer of the stamp and then I can stamp with it. Now this was kind of really hard to see, so I went ahead and I added a second layer because I, I just, I didn't know um, if there was enough on. But um, in other ones, after, after I did this the first time, I tried it with just once and there was plenty there. But it, it is kind of hard to see, so it's, it's almost like Versamark because it's such a thin coat. So here's where the magic happens. Um, and with any of these snow markers, you really want to hit them with your heat gun while it's still wet. If you let them dry, they don't puff up near as much. But check this out. You get a ton of texture that just pops up and I was able to stamp that. Now this wouldn't work for like super fine detail, but for something like this for the seashell, it works great. Doesn't it look cool? So I was really happy with that. And then for my third layer on the other shell, I decided that I wanted to use some embossing powder, bring in some metallics there. So I've got some copper um, embossing powder already set up. I stamped with Versamark ink and I did use the, the little heat, or I'm sorry, powder tool to make sure I didn't get stray embossing powder. But in this instance, it would not have mattered. And that was very pretty, but Compared to the snow marker, I felt like maybe it would pale in comparison. So um, I grabbed a glue pen and then I also grabbed some of this really fine, it's like coppery glitter that that was also in my Pearl X set. And I just kind of, just kind of flicked on some lines and added some of that really pretty glitter there. And that kind of finished up that li those layers. Now for the fourth layer on the purple shell, I wanted to add some metallic to this one as well. So I'm stamping again with Versamark ink and then I'm going to go ahead and put silver embossing powder on this time. And once that's done, it looks really pretty and I was careful not to hit the snow marker because you don't want to like toast it up so it, it can turn colors on you if you're not careful. After I got all of the stamping done, I came in with my diamond glaze and I keep my diamond glaze in a fine tip bottle. This is the blue tip, so it's a really super fine tip bottle. Um, it's great for outlining. It's great for smaller spaces. After I did this very first shell, I realized it's not great for flooding whole big images like this. <laughs> um, so I fixed that for the next one. But you can see I'm just kind of covering the whole entire shell here. And I did this for all of my shells. And I just kind of wanted to, to give it some, some shine and also keep all of the textury stuff locked in place. Now, after the first one, I used the, the fine point bottle just to outline it. And then I grabbed my big refill bottle of the Diamond Glaze and I just kind of flooded in there. It's just kind of like, like if you do sugar cookies, <laughs> you have the outline and then the flood line um, or the, the flood fill. That's what I did here. And for these copper colored shells, while the diamond glaze was still wet, I was sprinkling on a couple of those little glass beads. They're really pretty. And I was only picking up like two or three beads at a time because if you have a whole scoop, it's not so easy to kind of sprinkle it. They'll all fall in one place and then you'll have a clump of them. So I was careful to just pick up a couple at a time. And then I just kind of poke them in with my diamond glaze needle point there. And that will really make sure they lock in place and not fall off. So it's really pretty. You get a lot of texture and I just love the way they turned out. Now, while your shells are drying, the paper is going to want to curl, even though this is like the thick watercolor paper, you know, it'll always want to curl. Use that to your advantage. So just kind of puff them out like, like a seashell. And then I've got my panels here and they are mostly dry, but if you, if you feel them at this point, the chipboard is still kind of damp. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them between pieces of the parchment paper. I just kind of folded it accordion style and, and stuck one piece 
in, you know, between each fold. And then I'm going to put a block on top of it and then a big heavy box of markers on top of that. And I let it all dry overnight. So when I came back the next morning, they were dry, they were flat, and they were really pretty. I really like the way these came out. Now, like I said, they don't, they have sort of a, a chalky finish because I used a lot more of that flood medium rather than um, more paint to, to flood medium, you know, mix. Um, for the card bases, I went ahead and cut and scored them out of some craft card stock. I do have a couple that are landscape, the rest are top folding. And then I fussy cut all of my shells, and I think they look really cool. And if you guys know me, you know I hate to fussy cut, but these are simple to cut out, so I just did them by hand. I also went ahead and embossed a couple of the sentiments, like two of each that are in that stamp set. They're really pretty. I had some seashells in my stash. These are small enough that they will work on the cards. I also have some little clear drops. I have some magic mesh, and then we're going to use those beads again. So really, really quickly, I know this video is getting long. I'm just going to walk you through how I assembled one card. I did them all the same. So I went ahead and I used PVA glue to glue the panels to my card bases. They're glued down flat. I held them down with a, a block to dry. And then after that, I put a little strip of the magic mesh down. That's already sticky, so it's like self-adhesive already. You stick it where you want it, it stays there. And then I used my T-square to put my sentiment in place. I'm going to pop my shells up with foam tape. So I've got a double layer of foam tape on the copper shell and just a single layer of foam tape um, on the purple shells. So that way they can kind of be one's more elevated than the next. And I just laid them down on my card there. And in that kind of little cranny, nook and cranny there between the shells, I glued some or one of those tiny shells in there. Notice I've switched over to the Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. It does dry slower, but it's stronger than PVA. And so I glued down some of those little clear droplets, and then I just kind of randomly put a little, little bit of glue around the shells, and I'm gonna glue down some of those clear microbeads, and then I'll lock those in place with the diamond glaze. And then while that's dry, or still wet, I'm sorry, before it dries, I cleaned up the clear beads and then I came back in and I sprinkled on just a couple of those little copper colored ones just so that I would have a little more, you know, fleck of color down there. And that pretty much finishes up these cards. I did all six the same way. You can see each one is a little bit different. I changed up the sentiment from one card to the next, summer landscape, summer portrait, and I... I really, I just had a ton of fun making these. It took me two days, but I got six cards out of it and I got to get my hands dirty, <laughs> which is fun. So I hope that you will hop along with us on our mixed media madness. I've got links to the next stop down below, more pictures on my blog, um, links to that too. If you're new to my channel, feel free to click subscribe and ring that bell. After you're done hopping, if you wanna come back at, and check out a few more videos, I've got plenty for you. And as always, my friends, Thanks for watching.